All right, let's get talking now. I have uh, Charles Fakroha, uh, Ibrand TV senior business analyst. He joins me live here now. Thank you uh, for joining us. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> really glad to be here. All right, um, expenditure. Um, Nigerian consumption, talking about how much it is spent in about six months now, jumps to about 50.08 trillion in six months. That's how much they've been able to consume on this. That's quite a huge uh, expenditure. Now, what is your position to, to, to this? And of course, this looks to me like it's another channel or way of also uh, opening up another market Consum con consumption market, if I may say. So if the, the, it means that if we can consume this much yes. under six months, it means that there's a whole lot we can do to open up the market so that instead of this money going outside, yes. it, can, it can be domesticated. Yes, I agree with you. But however, one is not surprised with those figures, mm. you know, with inflation increasing, of course, and household spending, you know. Every, the average household must spend on energy. They mm. must spend on food and basic um, things. Mm. So, so let's take, for instance, energy uh, and food, for instance. Yes. So what you're saying is that perhaps this chunk of expenditure, yes. this figure, was suspended on energy and, and food. food. Basically. Mm. Yeah, because, I mean, these are things that people need on a day-to-day -day basis. We will continue to consume these. And the figures is going to increase year end now i agree with you when you say all this consumption you know we can channel it another market so that um and again you must agree that some of these consumptions were also things were also imported mm. and that is also affecting our foreign reserve now if some of these items that we consume food you know let's look at food now if we are consuming what we produce mm -hmm. then i'll say it's healthy but you also discover that we are not even producing enough to consume what we produce. So most of these things are also now being imported. So it's a problem. It is not just knowing our consumption figure, but we need to look at the issues of how we can consume these things that we are producing. Mm. That is, Again, our consumption should be based on what we produce basically, mm. not just importing some of these food items. Now, what wonders, I mean, how come the consumption rate from first quarter of 2022 yes. uh, compared to second quarter of 2022 yes. went up? If you look at yes. uh, 2022, uh, the first quarter went up by 6.94%. Yes. And in the first quarter, second quarter of 2022, it has gone as high from that 6.94% yes. to 17.64%. So what does this mean, really? Because, again, you talk mm -hmm. about the fact that the, uh, when it comes to inflation, yes. it's going high. It's going high. So as, as far as inflation is going high, I understand from my little knowledge of economics okay. that naturally um, maybe consumption should decline. But in these cases, it's different. Yes, I agree with you. Consumption is ready to decline. Consumption on luxury items. But on food items, basic necessities, of course, you can't stop people from not eating. You can't stop people mm. from not consuming electricity. These are basic items that, as a result of inflation, the costs would increase. And of course, people will continue to consume this item. And that is why we are seeing this increase in, um, in, in, in 2022. So, as long as we continue to consume mm. and we are not producing enough, we will import. And when we import, it will increase the bill for the government. And of course, our Federal Reserve will be affected. And that is, of course, when you have inflation doing over 20%, what do you expect? Mm. Money spent, of course, before maybe we're using 100 naira to purchase a particular food item. Now you go to the market, it's about 200 naira. That's, that's right. That's right. So you can see that, yes, these figures will continue to increase unless, in fact, they continue to increase. Mm. And I because these are, base, these are basics, basic items are basics. that we need mm. to continue to consume. Yeah. Okay. Let's move to the next story now. Of course, the oil marketers in Nigeria um, mm -hmm. are asking the federal government, because this is issue one 
issue to another. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, one issue just keep uh, you know coming up, uh, but this time around is the fact that the there has been a directive for operators now yeah. to start paying in naira, but it has not been implemented. Uh, and so, how do you, how do we, you know? push this forward where do we push this to because again okay if you look at it again it is this of course is linked to the fact that um this will put pressure on the naira yes. that's according to some analysts <clears throat> that why pay in dollar when the government has given directly that uh, pay, this marketer yes. should pay in, in naira yeah. <clears throat> yes again i had even queried the rationale behind these government agencies especially nimasa mm. Collecting their their dues, you know, from the shippers in dollars. Even some payment people make to NPA, mm. they pay. In, I've heard that long mm. ago, and I start querying. I say, ah, how? How will you tell these people to pay in dollars? Now we have seen the issues now, the forex scarcity and all that. Government and gave a directive, and from the intro, you can see that um, even that directive has not been implemented mm. you see in the time has come when we need to hold people responsible of course the people in the massa and npa they are the ones collecting this on behalf of federal government that's right so if there is a directive given by the federal government collect these charges or dues that are due to us in, in naira, in naira. Mm. why won't that be implemented so again i will also indict the government you have given out a policy. You come out with the policy. Now, the implementation is not just formulating this policy. The implementation and monitoring. So you can see, now it's now taking the marketers now to begin to shout and complain. Again, we begin to ask ourselves, this government, are we really serious with what we are doing? Mm. Because it's, it's, I just can't phantom it. Because if you, again, well, we have to also, you know, narrow down a little bit. Um, when we talk about government, the person in charge of this uh, ministry, yes. of course, you talk about, um, you know, Minister you know, of Transport. Yeah, Minister, Minister of Transport. Transport of so, Finance, too. Yeah, Minister of Transport, of course, in charge. NP is under the Ministry of Transport. Yes, you have Nimasa under the Ministry of Transport. And so the <laughs> governor said, look, Nimasa. Then NPA. NPA start charging in Naira. Yes. So maybe we should begin to ask the minister, the minister of transport, what are you doing? I mean, okay. if you say this to start charging, port charges yes. should be you know collected in, in Naira. Naira, and then why are these agencies not uh, you know implementing it? I think there has to be someone has to answer. Exactly, we need to hold people accountable for their job because you can mm. see, and it is not only in this issue, any, any many other issues, government will give a directive. The people there who are to implement it, they will not. And at the end of the day, nobody gets um, punished or for flouting government directly. And that is why they will continue. Because for me, I don't see any reason why a minister will give a directive on behalf of federal government and the people in the so-called agencies will not implement that directive. It's, um, will, I, will I say, subordination? And of course, if that is proven, then... The people in charge in um, the mass and NPA should be called to answer what mm -hmm. um, they have done. And that is, you can also, it's not far from a corruption issue <laughs> again, because yes, of course, that's, some people say this is corruption, because if there is a directive <laughs> to pay in Naira, and, and then you are still collecting in dollars, in dollars, so that's corruption as well, because of course, if you get 1,000 US dollars, you know how much that amount to now, at the rate of, at the current rate of exchange in it, the it's black even market. economic yeah. sabotage, mm -hmm. and that's, that's where we can even invite the FCC to begin to investigate. Exactly. Yes. Let's move to the next story now. Um, of course, the com Conference of Party uh, 27, that's um, the 27th edition, which of course has was uh, took place in um, Egypt. Uh, Egypt last week. Espat, you know, um, I think it's still ongoing. Yes, yeah, um, still ongoing. Yes, Espat also pushing for food cold chains. I'm, I'm asking myself, uh, the food cold chains they are talking about to curb hunger, and this is in form of storehouses. This is in form of. Uh, you know also so what does this entail if, from, from your own understanding because you need to look at capture the whole value chain system in this particular um you know scheme or initiative yes i'm particularly very pleased and happy with the participants in cop 27 it shows that yes that conference is not just another talk show we are seeing 
you know, government making commitment and all that. Mm. Yes. Before this COP27, here in Nigeria, we have also realized that when you harvest, farmers harvest, you find out that the price of this produce will be cheaper at the harvesting period. Right. And mm. after that time, it goes up again. It, mm. it becomes scarce. Mm. Now, farmers will tell you they are producing enough, but the issue is with storage, especially perishable items. Now, what vegetable items like you tomatoes, have potatoes, yeah, tomatoes, exactly. vegetables, vegetables. All, yes. Mm. Now, what COP27 is now saying, let's government invest in sustainable food, cold chain, you know, mm. in terms so of one, from the harvesting stage to the storage, transportation, and final consumption by the customers. The quality of the produce is very, very important. Mm. You harvest, you store, your storage facilities must have the mm. qualified personnel to handle it. Mm. The equipment must also be good so that at the end, even if this perishable item stays for a longer period in that uh, storage, of course, when me and you consume, the quality will mm. still be it, the it same. It looks like the world is under pressure. We'll move to the next story quickly. Okay. Well, it looks like the world is under pressure now because almost, you know, a billion people are, you know, stand the risk of hunger. Yes. Because, because that's the, that's the, 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 the figure the, the we figures, have. Yes, so, I agree with them. Yes. Oh, almost a billion people, yes. the population, are hungry yes. at the moment. So, again, one will have to look at it and say, I think we need to start thinking about the market part of it. I mean, bring about how to open up, you know, it, bring more investors, talk about investment, talk about how many people need to play in this sector. So, and yes. I, mean, I mean, different, you know, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, you know partners to play in this particular yes. sector. Because you need to meet these needs. Agreed, Frank. But again, you might not agree with me. We produce enough food in this world. The Almighty has given us all the resources the arable land and of course the technology we can produce enough the issue is distribution and that is why cop is saying our storage facilities should be enhanced mm. and improved so that all year round this food item will be available at affordable mm. prices whether in season or out of season, season. exactly now let's move to the next story the national pension commission um has revealed uh, plans to intensify financial sufficiency what they call financial <laughs> self-sufficiency for micro pension plan um i mean that mpp so, so subscribers as the numbers of contribution uh has increased to around eighty four thousand. that yes. means that small businesses also can also um start subscribing to this because usually you have the big organizations subscribing to it yeah. then their employers <laughs> i mean em employees are also part of the yes. of the scheme as well but this time it's like it's going to be capturing you know, the, the, the very very yes. small businesses mm. yes again let's look at it very well the pension reform act of 2004 as amended 2014 stated clearly once you operate an organization mm. at least four five well, let's say okay five six personnel you are expected to register with that scheme where the employee that's right will contribute his own the employer will contribute and of course is sent to a pfe now they discover that they have not captured certain categories of workers you might have an addresser who the owner and one other staff mm. and maybe one other person two or three of them it's not captured it's not captured so this micro pension scheme is going to capture them and they're not saying the scheme is saying for this micro pension scheme is saying if you have three and less than three even you as an individual you just own mm. your business only you you can register in this micro pension scheme mm. first of all you must be of age okay. 18 that's then right. you must be doing the legitimate business you might have one or two employees and you register for the scheme and then um, mm. uh, because it's going to come what we call old age Poverty, mm. because they are prepared. They are preparing for their own retirement. They will not need to depend on anybody if they be made to save 
for now. And mm -hmm. when they are retired, or the Carol Loga will. I'm, I'm afraid we are out of time. I would have <laughs> asked you another question because, okay. again, the question is how many businesses, these small businesses, you know, can survive, you know, five year, ten year circle of, you know, over yeah, I mean, that will survive, survive yeah. they need to plan for the retirement. What I would like you to know. I think we need yes. to leave it there. Charles Fakoha, okay. Ibrahim TV, senior honors. Thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure. Let's break first. Thank you. Still to come after the break, the NGX All Share Index and market capitalization depreciated by 0.68% in the week to close at 43,960.75%, as market capitalization also set to about 23.94 trillion naira, respectively. Well, this is our focus next when we return from this commercial break. Please stay with us. <music> 